morning everyone, my name is Henny Fisher and I'm from the University of Pretoria in South Africa and welcome to a really nice spring day uh, in the southern hemisphere and particularly welcome to the 10th um, International Food Studies Conference that happens virtually in New York this year. I apologize for the side noise but this is done on an iPhone and um, we are going to talk a little bit about South African cuisine and I wanted to introduce our cuisine to the viewers. So um, this is a very interesting way of looking at a culture. So when we look at cuisine, there's always four aspects in, that is of importance. That is ingredients, preparation techniques, flavorings, and then the social context. And I've tried to um, bring together a vast array of South African um, aspects that relate to those four principles of a cuisine. South Africa is a very um, diverse demographic um, population and therefore there's a little bit of, of everything available here. So if we start, I think I'd like to show you some things that make the cuisine what it is. And in that context, I, um, I'm talking about things like drying. So um, because of South Africa's history, there was always um, a need to uh, travel long distances. So people over time learned how to preserve food through drying. And at the moment, things like um, biltong and um, druivors are core examples of drying. And then you have things like fruit rolls, which are dried fruit that is spread on a baking sheet and dried in the sun or in um, the oven these days. As you can see, these are now commercially available and extremely nutritious. So um, that is one of the, 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 the core South African cuisine principles. Um, we're talking about things like rusks. Rusks are these large um, bread-like biscuits that have been completely dried in the oven. And South Africans all have them for their morning or during the day snack and dunk them in coffee or tea. And then um, more particular or more regionally specific than things like bokoms, which are um, um, small pieces of dried fish that is particular to the west coast um, of South Africa. So um, one can see that drying therefore is a, is a um, core um, principle then um, of and South, Af South African cuisine. Other things that um, might be very specific to South Africa is these wonderful um, societies, and sorry, I haven't even taken my glad um, off there. So societies are um, essentially kebabs, and they are made from lamb, and they have um, dried apricots on, so again, the drying, and onion. But in this instance, what is important is the combination of fruit with meat. So South Africans are very partial to having meat in and um, having fruit or particularly dried fruit in their meat. This particular um, dish is not um, complete yet. It still needs quite a sort of a spicy, almost curryish um, marinade that goes over um, that. But that is um, then also something that is very specific um, to South African cuisine is the fact that there's this um, preference for f sweetness or fruitiness um, with uh, meat. And <clears throat> perhaps one can um, take that further to this little dish here yeah, that is called a bunny chow. And a bunny chow is a, is a, is a, a piece of white loaf that has a very nice curry inside and the top is cut off and then um, when you order this in a restaurant you put the little lid back and it's eaten by hand. Um, and the, the inside it can be anything from lamb to um, beef or whatever. So, so that is the second of my ideas around um, 
um, the cuisine principles is the sweetness with a protein and one can also find that in this dish which is called pickled fish so it's essentially a white fish that is um, deep fried pan fried in a, in a light um, flour coating and then it has this um, really spicy curry sauce um, that goes um, over it and it's pickled and it lasts for a long time so this again um, speaks to the preserving aspect but then also speaks to the um, sort of sweetness with protein aspect but then the next one would be um, spiciness because of uh, the way that our culture was um, formed um, and with different cultures coming into South Africa there's a a, a particular preference for spiciness with things and we think we think of um, things like um, achar so achar is a, a pickle that is made with uh, um, green mango and um, it has um, Indian origins but it's very spicy and um, flavorsome and is often eaten um, with meat and in the same sense then our lovely um, chakalaka which is a vegetable stew and also quite spicy and and almost sweet again in the sense even though there's no um, particular um, fruit in there so that sort of um, spiciness with with food is um, then the third component and um, there's also things like our peri peri sauce that um, comes from Mozambique but um, is a is a firm favorite um, in South Africa and that's very hot but also fairly um, spicy and then perhaps aspects like cinnamon with um, desserts so this is our milk tart which is um, a, 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 a dessert that is like a, a tart and it has a lot of um, cinnamon over but we also eat um, pancakes um, and we we call these pancakes I know um, they are not the same all over the world the name um, but they have a sugar cin cinnamon inside and they are um, completely lovely so that sort of uh, spiciness is um, also then taken through um, to even desserts but then we step on to um, another aspect and that is sort of milky food that South Africans are also quite partial to. And um, in that sense, we then move on to a complete um, different part. So, so milk tart that being that sort of um, milkiness, but um, we, we have a lot of um, dishes that are made with corn. And even though corn isn't indigenous in South Africa, it is so naturalized now that um, we use it. So those are just small little millies and we call them millies on the cob. This is um, samp. We call these um, the samp um, in, um, or harmony and grits um, for the finer one um, that Americans call. We make something called pap, which is a staple in our country. And then we get that milkiness that comes in with that. So um, the pap is often eaten with um, milk um, over the pup but the pup can also be soured and we'll get to that aspect of the South African cuisine in a moment so this is just um, yellow um, corn yellow millies that um, is ground ground up and we use that um, particularly when we um, make um, braai so um, we we do a lot of things with the millies and and for instance um, there's a drink here that is um, called mahao and it is um, made from millies and it's this really rich and uh, delicious uh, drink that one can now buy commercially as well so millies is a is a huge uh, um, product um, in south africa and we use it um, quite often but i mentioned the, um, the the yellow pup that we make and that is often eaten with a meal in South Africa that um, most other people in the world call um, a barbecue in South Africa we refer to it as um, a braai and um, during a braai these societies might be served but we also make a very particular um, sausage that we call burabos and that would be a staple at um, every braise. And, and braise are 
um, important in South Africa. So um, one could, might, one might also at a braai find something like um, roosterkoek, which are um, dough um, bread rolls that are um, cooked directly on the um, fire as well. But talking about breads, um, perhaps we can move on to some other grains. So this is a lovely bread that um, is made in many parts of South Africa, but also comes particularly from um, areas of um, Lesotho, and it's called Dombolo, and it's a steamed bread. This one is just made in the container as is, so the dough is in the bowl and it's placed in a pot with water, but one can also make it in um, on top of a stew. So you make a really nice stew and then you place these dumplings on top of the meat and, and that is steamed in there. So that is also um, called um, dombolo. So um, I said I was going to move on to the um, grain. So before I do that, I just want to also mention some processed meat before we leave all the meat. So this is poloni and it is also um, a big favorite in South Africa. It's just a simple um, processed meat and um, a lot of people um, um, use that um, in their meal. So grains, there's a lot of grains now that are um, getting a lot of attention and at our university, um, the University of Pretoria, we do a lot of research on ancient grains or lost grains and I want to mention a few. So these are called cow peas, um, really um, nutritious. So this is um, sorghum and I have, and I, I apologize, that's not sorghum, that's um, pearl millet. Um, this is teff, but here's the sorghum, so whole sorghum and um, there's a lot of other um, products that one can get from that. So there's commercial sorghum flour um, and then also a morning porridge called matabella um, and this is a malted, malted product so um, it goes through the process of malting and again also eaten with um, milk in the morning. These lovely beans up and um, yeah, which comes in um, light um, ivory color, dark ones like these, and even multicolored like ones like these are called bambara. And um, this is a flower that's made from the bambara that we also um, do at university and does a lot of research from. And then finally, um, these are marama beans, and um, I was in a fortunate position to make some ice cream, toasted ice cream, toasted um, marama bean ice cream a while ago, and it was completely fantastic. Um, the other m um, important um, snack or, 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 or item in South Africa is of course peanuts, that we call peanuts in South Africa, but that the rest of the world might know as ground nuts. And these um, bambara nuts, the marama beans, I'm sorry, the marama beans, um, have a lot of um, taste similarities to the um, peanuts. So <clears throat> those are a, a few of the core aspects. One that I didn't mention um, is um, a sourness. So that brings us then to a, a, a completely different um, a genre and sourness is often achieved through fermentation. So we have ginger beer, we have something called mass or amasi, we have a, an alcoholic beer that is made from um, sorghum that um, is commercially available and those are all achieved through um, fermentation. So the sourness comes from um, the fermentation. Buttermilk that is often used um, in baking and so on. But the sourness can also be natural and this is called um, a monkey apple and it's just an indigenous fruit that grows on either trees or vines and they have these large fleshy seeds in inside um, and they are just completely wonderfully um, aromatic and, and, and tasty. So we have a, another lot of um, indigenous um, ingredients, but on the topic of the sourness, one thing that is often used is um, boabab, and these are whole boabab seeds, passing car, 
I'm sorry about that. And in right in front here is a little packet of Boabab powder. So one can actually, in fact, now buy this um, commercially in South Africa as well. So Boabab is often made in a drink and um, the seeds is taken and mashed up with um, a little bit of sugar and water. So the sour souriness um, aspect that also um, comes out. But I want to talk a, bit, a little bit before I um, wrap this up about things that are very particular to South Africa. We have a jam here that is called msorba. Msorba is um, a nightshade and it's a very dense, deep, um, dark, purple um, little berry um, and um, the wonderful fruit made from that but another berry that is um, really particular to South Africa is gooseberries or cake gooseberries and these have a little outside um, um, covering um, almost like a tomatillo um, and in that same sense in the front there um, you can see some butternut that I'm sure is not um, unfamiliar to the viewers, but um, we use a lot of that. We have a melon there that is completely orange inside that is referred to as a spun speck in South Africa. Right at the bottom here, we have a piece of edible aloe and we often um, make um, like a preserved crystallized sweet with that. That is a very particular edible um, aloe. One should um, watch out for that. And similarly, um, some prickly pear that was particularly um, um, developed so that it doesn't have so much um, hair. Something that um, might also ref um, refer back to the sort of meaty things with with um, fruit in and so on is something called pond wheat, or we refer to it as vatablomikis. Um, which means water flowers and these are lilies that grow on the ponds in the Cape and we often make that with a lamb stew. This is a particular green leafy plant um, and they go as a collective name of Morocco and um, they are often made into a little um, sambal or a salsa or a cooked sauce that is served with pop as well um, back to the thing and this one um, is amaranth and they make lots of things with amaranth um, and amongst other it can be used as a um, Morocco as well and then just uh, back to things like the souriness this is called speck boom which translates to um, bacon tree which has a wonderful souriness over here we have some indigenous um, uh, jasmine and these are actually edible and wonderfully fragrant we often use those um, on desserts for plating we have plumbago which has this wonderful little pale um, blue flower in the back yeah I have a big plant yeah um, with big leaves and this um, is called madumbi so it makes a bulbous um, tuber and it grows primarily in water and it's often um, used um, in food in South Africa and then of course just to be um, otherwise I brought some ostrich eggs I don't know if anyone can get close enough to an ostrich to take any eggs to um, eat them I hope I have taught you something about South African cuisine or made you interested in South African um, cuisine. I hope that everyone enjoys the conference this year even though we can't be um, there together face to face and um, hopefully we'll see each other I think in Copenhagen in um, 2021. Goodbye everyone.